Hey, me, I am Pastor Carney, and this is... Bill Coon, welcome to Redeemer Review. Welcome. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. That's right. Uh, did you have a good Christmas? Everything done? All your Christmases finished up? I finished up mine this weekend. It's done. That's I right. can finally say I've had a good Christmas because it is Epiphany. 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 January 6th is Epiphany. The light has come, which is what Epiphany means. The light has come. And Christmas is now over on the calendar, Phil. But Jesus is still active and alive every single day of our lives. So in a way, Christmas continues. I like it. So if you still want to give me Christmas gifts, go right ahead. Okay, right. that sounds good. All right. right. My gift to you today is what? Is our talking points. Let's get through them then. So here's what we're talking about okay. today. Of course, our theme, which is the baptism of our Lord. Yes. We've got Sunday service and Pastor Work's going to be here with us. For Absolutely. That. Uh, we'll give you a little steps update. We'll talk about the National Youth Gathering, uh, a rummage sale coming up. That we'll Rummage sale coming up in May. That's right. We'll take a look at the good news. We'll do some prayer requests. We've got some announcements and videos. And then we'll finish up with three questions Ooh. with Pastor Carney. Ooh. Okay. I'm ready. I'm Should ready. Be fun. So what are we talking about this Sunday? Or should I say what's Pastor Work talking about? Sunday? Well, that's right. I'm not going to be here. Um, uh, in a few hours, I catch a plane in a few hours. And I am off to Buffalo, New York. Um, actually, I'm off to North Tonawanda. But no I idea where that's Well, that's why I either say Buffalo or Niagara Falls. Okay. Because when I say North Tonawanda, people say, where's that? And uh, I am going to my niece's wedding. Congratulations. And oh, thank you, thank you. And uh, Donna is already there, as you know. And she's doing all the, the pre stuff, I guess, uh, the flowers, the dresses, uh, you know, whatnot. And uh, I'm joining her today. So tonight, I will be in uh, Buffalo, New York. And I'll be there until Monday morning okay. when I get on a plane with Donna and we fly to LAX and then we fly to Hawaii. Oh, right. So, so we're off there. So, yes. You're, so, not, you're not excited about that. Oh, right? not, not at all. No. Not at all. No, 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 I'm dressed and ready to go. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so this Sunday, uh, Pastor Work is going to be here. Now, uh, I'm not quite sure what he's going to preach on because he has a choice. Today is Epiphany, and so we can preach on Epiphany, or Sunday happens to be the baptism of our Lord. So he has a choice between Epiphany and the baptism of our Lord. So the choice is his. It's going to be a surprise. But, uh, it's yeah. going to be a surprise. Uh, the Epiphany, as I said, is the light has come. And so we can talk about the, the three kings, but as we heard a couple weeks ago, we don't know the three kings. That's right. Um, but he can talk about that, or the baptism of Jesus. When uh, Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. And uh, as Jesus made his way down to the river, and John the Baptist is, is uh, standing near the water, look, behold the Lamb of God. And comes Jesus, and John the Baptist baptizes Jesus. So, Pastor Work can go either way on that. And so, just blessings to Pastor Work and his message. And uh, I know it's going to be awesome. And I'll be watching from, from Buffalo. Oh, really? Bro, yeah, yeah, Pastor Work always does a good job, and obviously he's a member here, yeah. so he's loved and respected, so we're looking forward to having him uh, fill in this Sunday. We'll miss you, safe travels, but uh, yeah. Pastor Work will put us in good hands. So. And in two weeks, Pastor Proctor will be here. Oh yeah, okay. And I'll be in, in Waikiki, so, uh, and I asked Billy if he can zoom me in somehow to uh, the Thursday yeah. review, and uh We'll see how it goes. See so, how that goes. And maybe you can give us a nice little view of Hawaii. If you if you see palm trees behind me, you know where I you am. know where you're at. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, what is, uh, what's the verse that we have to look forward to coming up uh, this Sunday? Well, the verse is this. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And that's Matthew chapter 2, verse 6. Very good. Thanks, Pat. Okay, Pastor, so uh, we have a little steps update for everybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very exciting news. The grant that Tammy in the daycare was yeah. waiting to come through, it has. It has. And it's a fantastic news indeed. Uh, they're awarded $98,000. Damn! A lot can be done Damn. with that. Oh. $98,000. Oh, what a blessing oh. to Little Steps Daycare. A so. lot of good stuff goes on down there already, and that was just another blessing from God. So, yep. yeah, awesome. And Tammy does some awesome work down there. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. 98,000. So thank God. Now, you've got some news. Youth gathering. Houston, we got a problem <laughs> or a solution. Billy Pinkerhoff is heading to Houston, Texas. <laughs> yes, um, our youth, along with Billy and Haley and
and I'm not sure uh, any other adults are going with them, but our youth are heading down to Houston this summer. And uh, I've been to youth gatherings. I don't know if you have, but I've been to youth gatherings, and they are awesome. I went as a teenager. They drew, oh, they're awesome. And the, the music is just out of this world. And um, the, the the speakers out of this world, the Bible studies, the worship, it's just, it's just fantastic. And when I was there, there were like 36 to 38,000 kids there and, wow. and, and leaders. I'm not sure what the numbers are now, but back then it was just awesome. Nolan's, uh, San Antonio we were at, Orlando we were at, so it's good. So they're going to they're gonna enjoy Houston. They really are. Um, so God bless the youth, God bless Billy for taking them on down. And it's going to be awesome. Now, they still need some help. Uh, they have some extra kids, which is great, yep. that are going down. So their goal increased a little bit. Sure. But with the help of church council, as you well know, uh, the church council kicked in a little bit more uh, money for that. And I know that they've been raising funds uh, with their uh, uh, rummage sale. And so a lot of good stuff. And hopefully they'll meet that goal. Meet and that goal. I have a feeling they're going to meet it. Ah, so do I. And to have these kids go for free. It, it's awesome. So yeah. it, it's going to be great. It's it takes the stress off the parents, the stress off the kids. They can go enjoy their time. Yeah. And Billy, you've talked about in the past what a bonding experience it oh. is for the kids and yeah. how strong their faith becomes yeah. after that. It, it is fantastic. Good. And you, you mentioned uh, one other chaperone. Uh, it is going to be Sarah. Oh, cool. Uh, Rachel's sister. Perfect. Uh, she has gone as a youth. Last time she was a yak. She was a yak. And this time she's going as an adult. Yeah, very good. So, yeah, my daughter was a yak. Uh, young adult council, they call them, uh, or young adult. It's now young adult volunteer. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. And they're all dressed yeah. in orange. Yes. And yes. Crazy things going yes. on. They're basically the yeah. uh, youth gathering cheerleaders. Yeah. yeah, and she was on stage for the uh, the Christian version of Bachelorette. Oh, uh, when, when she interesting. Was, when she was one of the yaks, and then so it was really. I have a funny story. If I have a moment, Billy, I have a funny story. Um, they asked the pastors to come down and, and have communion. Thirty-eight thousand pe- people with communion, and so I had my clerical shirt on. I looked really clerical, but really pastor-like, and I forgot that I had my big golf hat on. And so I'm giving out communion, and the camera came on me. And all the district presidents are sitting up on stage. No pressure. No pressure. And all of a sudden, my image came on on the camera, and the synodical president turned to the guy sitting next to him, who happened to be my district president, and he said, who's that pastor? (laughs) And my DP said, "Uh, he's one of mine. And it was me and my big old golf hat. And then I, when I looked at the Jumbotron, I went, you know, take, eat the body. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. proof that even yeah. pastors aren't perfect. That's right. right. I was wearing my golf hat during King Ridge. But it's a blast. The kids are going to love it. I don't think God judged you too much. Hey, right? He didn't judge me at all, but I'm still here. So, uh, <laughs> But the kids are going to love it. It's going to be yeah. an awesome time. And all your kids, all your youth, yep. you're going to love it. Have an awesome time. God bless you. I'm going to help you get there free of charge. So we're good to go. That's right. Go. And what about this rummage sale that we have coming up? Billy, you've got information on that for us, right? Yep. Well, yeah, the rummage sale is back. Um, uh, I've only been here since the number first, but I heard that it was off for a year or two because of COVID and whatnot. But the rummage sale is back, which is good news. Um, as you heard me say, that uh, a portion of the money is going to the youth. The other portion is going to the daycare. Uh, to do some mighty things in the daycare. So uh, the rummage sale is going on. So if you have any items, please begin to bring them down. Uh, You can put them in the welcome center downstairs. Um, If you have large items uh, that you need help with, uh, just get a hold of of Billy Bob. Billy Bob. Billy Bob. Billy Billy Bob and Philly who? (laughs) Get a hold of Billy or Barb, not Billy Bob. Okay, Billy or Barb. Or Jamie. Or Tammy, and uh, we'll get your items down here to the church. Again, if you have like couches, dresses, um, mattresses, I'm not sure if you do mattresses or not, but like box springs, and whatever, big items, please let us know. Uh, don't let that hinder you from bringing your items down. We will get them here to church. Don't worry about that. And we have a place to store all the items, um, place that we can put the items until May. So uh, please come on down. Uh, for the sale, but also bring your stuff to the sale or call us and we'll get you stuff here for the sale. Um, so it's going to be stored in the garage, stored here, stored all over the place. It's going to be a good time. So. Yeah, it's a great idea for sure. Yeah, so that's good news. I've also got some other good news. Um, take it away, Phil. Let's dive into the I'm going to get news. some water. That's right. For this week, 
Now, the good news is that our sins have been taken away. Amen. In his baptism, Jesus is cloaked with all of our sin, and he carries that to the cross for us. He does this so that when we're presented before God on that glorious day, he'll not see our sin, but only the unending grace and his perfect son, yeah. Jesus. That is good news for everybody, Pastor. It, it is good news because I know I see it every single day. So do I. Uh, just ask Donna, so tell you. Um, but in all my sins are washed away. Yeah. And um, and and I'm I'm redeemed. I'm a sinner made a saint. So it's well, good news. Same goes for me. Uh Pastor, we've got a prayer opportunity here. So coming into the new year, we have people traveling, we've got a new school semester. Uh, do you mind saying a prayer for yeah. all of those that are just... Like I said, I'm traveling in about a few hours. So. That's right. And yeah. I'm taking off and I'll be gone yeah. uh, for You're the going next days as well. Yeah. I'll be down in Brown County. So. Oh, well, yeah. enjoy. Thank so, you. Melissa, all the girls, everyone's gone? Yeah, that's right. Melissa and the girls, we're going with a couple family members. Cool. So, Good yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah. I'm staying in cabin. So, wow. So, that that's cool. So, how long are you going for? Uh, three days. Oh, so, so well, you'll be back by we'll yourself be... doing next week's review. We'll see about that, right, Billy? Okay. Maybe right. Billy and I will take it over okay. again. I don't know. Yeah. We'll figure something out. Right. Billy Bob. Boy. Billy Bob. Boy. Billy Bob. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, in all seriousness, uh, safe travels. Um, 2022 is upon us. So uh, let's just first off give it to God, yeah. and, and let's give it to God, and His will be done. But let's um, let's kind of ask God in a prayer for a safe and a, a healthy 2022, and uh, and the new school year. Um, you mentioned in, uh, that your kids are going back or are back late because of... Yeah, they'll be yeah. back uh, coming up Monday. Yeah, they have so, their e-learning day. But yeah, yeah Warsaw yeah. School is going back next week. So, so different uh, college kids are starting to go back. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, different college kids are going back. So uh, let's keep all that in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. And Father, we thank you for the epiphany that the light has dawned. And we know that the true light is, of course, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And... Father, we thank you for the light, the light of Jesus that shines brightly in our lives and shines brightly in the world around us. And Father, we just entrust this world, this creation to your care. We, we give this new year to you. Although we are six days into this new year, we give it to you and we pray that thy will be done. And uh, that's all we need to pray is thy will be done. Uh, but Father, if we can be ever so bold in prayer to ask you for a safe and a healthy 2022. And Father, we pray for those who have been affected by uh, whether it be disease, illnesses, whether it be financial hardships, whether it be relational hardships, we just give it all to you that this year is a blessing to everyone in this new year. Father, we thank you for the kids who have been home from school for vacation or from winter break for colleges. And now we pray to be with them as they travel back to school for our college kids. And we pray for those young kids that are going back to high school, elementary school, and junior high, that, that their education is also a blessing to them. And Father, we pray for the teachers and the professors and the staff at these schools. Keep them strong to the end um, and help them to, to share their love of education with all their students. So Father, we just give all this to you. In your son's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Pastor. Sure enough, we got some announcements for you this week. First of all, what's going on? There's going to be a combined service on January yes. 30th. It's going to be at 10 a.m. So mark that on your calendars. January 30th, 10 a.m. There's going to be a potluck to follow, welcoming our new members to the church, which we haven't done for a while. Welcome. Yep. Thank right. you. And, and we have several new members. Oh, lots of them. So and even more in the coming weeks. So right. yes. yeah. So exciting yes. stuff. So January 30th, 10 a.m. Put that on your calendar. Yes. Also, Women's Bible Study resumes on Monday at 6.30. There's going to be a council meeting coming up Tuesday at 6 p.m. And that's what we have going on this week. Yes. Now, Billy, we've got a sermon review video, and then we're going to pop back on for three questions with Pastor Carney. Sounds great. Right. See you soon. See you soon. And so on the church calendar, the days after Christmas are associated with two significant events. First, as you just heard, the martyrdom of Stephen and also the terrible event of the gospel text, the murder of the innocents, where King Herod orders the death of every baby boy born in the town of Bethlehem, two years of age and under. O little town of Bethlehem, 
Your streets are awash with blood. Well, perhaps you find it difficult or hard to believe that any political leader could give such a morbid command, ordering the grisly death of hundreds of infants. And perhaps you find it even harder to believe that any group of soldiers would willingly carry out such an order. And yet, this scene is not really unfamiliar to us. Even in the Bible. Remember sometime earlier, a different king ordered the death of great numbers of children? His name was whom? Pharaoh. Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Why? Because he wanted to secure his power by doing away with what he had called potential rivals. And it's translated into slaughtering great numbers of babies. Now, that's a similar picture of what we have here in the gospel text. Herod, king of the Jews, in attempting to secure his power by doing away with a potential rival. And in this case, it's one baby, Jesus. Now, to set the scene for you, the wise men had just told King Herod, That a king, there's the word, that a king had been born in Bethlehem, and Herod is determined to hang on to his power. And not knowing which baby in Bethlehem was Jesus, he decided to do away with Jesus by doing away with all the baby boys who were two years of age and under. And we're back. And we're back. And it's time for three questions with Pastor Carney, our favorite segment of the day. Billy, what do we got? Well, uh, let's start off with, uh, it's the New Year's. It is indeed. And uh, I've heard uh, you talk and ask me questions about services for New Year's. Is there a possibility we might have a New Year's Eve service coming back at any point soon? Or, well, not soon. I mean, it, it'd, it'd be, be another year. year but and, it, and if so, what's important about a New Year's Eve service? We've done them in the past. Wow. There'll be some in the future. That's putting Carney on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> we, won't, um, we won't hold you to it. All right. Well, here's the thing. Uh, it's an elder decision. Not a here, decision here's, well, so. it, it's kind of both. It, it's okay. kind of both. Um, I have an agenda, Billy. Yes. And on my agenda, I put things on my agenda to look at in the future. And I can tell you um, out there in online land that on my agenda is a discussion, hence the word discussion, of a Thanksgiving Eve service. Wow. Yes. That'd and, be cool. Uh, I'm not saying there is going to be one. I'm saying we are going to have a discussion about it. Sure. And it is my prayer, if you ask me my opinion, I would love to have a Thanksgiving service. Um, So we're going to take a look at that. And on my agenda is taking a look at possible a New Year's Eve service. Again, am I saying there is one? I'm saying we're going to have a discussion about it. Okay. And um, as as the Bible says, we're two or three gathered in my name. So if we get two or three people there, we're good to go. And we'll have that because we got me, my wife, you, yeah. Cheryl Lynn. So we got four people already. So we meet the biblical quota. So yes, um, I, it's important because we give thanks to God in all things. Yes. And it's a new year and we should give the new year to God and to say thank you for the past year. So yes, it will be a discussion point between myself and the elders to possibly look at a Thanksgiving Eve service and a New Year's Eve service. Right. But next year, next year has its own set of, I don't want to say problems, but when it comes to worship, there is a situation that does need discussion, whether you know this or not. But next year, 
you have New Year's Eve on Sunday. Oh. Ooh. So, um, I think it's Sunday. Well, I know if we have Christmas Eve. Yeah, that'd have put yeah. Christmas Eve on Sunday, too. Yeah. So, um, so Christmas Eve is either Saturday or Sunday. <laughs> Phil's taking it out. Yeah. He's thinking yeah. Saturday. Christmas Eve is Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. that's right. Christmas Day but then, or uh, Christmas, New Year's Day is. But Christmas Day is Sunday. So this year it's Saturday. So He's right. Next year, 2023. That's right. Is, would, it, be, is, is it, is that, would be Sunday. But here, here's a question, Billy. Is we typically don't have a Christmas Day service. And that's where I was going to. It took me a while to get there. Thank you. <laughs> um, we typically don't have a Christmas Day service. This year, this we, we probably will, will because yeah. it's Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. The following year, Christmas Eve is on Sunday. Do we worship in the morning and at night, only at night? So there's a good question to talk about with this awesome bunch of elders. Um, this year and next year, what we're doing service-wise. So a long answer to a short question. That is, a, that is an excellent answer. I got a lot more information than I uh, was hoping for. And uh, it's good information. Go. So good, things, go. good things are happening and good things to look forward right. to coming up. And I'm one down, two to go. Two to go. And uh, first question, look forward. Next question is going to look backwards a little bit. You mm-hmm. talked about Herod. And the slaughter of the innocents. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, while I was listening to the sermon mm-hmm. and doing the slides, one question kept coming back into my mind: was the wise men yes. that avoided Herod? Oh yeah, they obviously mm-hmm. would have heard of mm-hmm. the slaughter mm-hmm. because of them, and also Jesus growing up mm-hmm. would have known about that because of him. Mm-hmm. How? How would you? deal with that that would be heavy on your soul not just you know jesus of course would have understood that that was happening or had to happen and he'd understand the reasons for that and you know the grand scheme but still that would be heavy on his human heart and then the wise men now what did we do yeah and i mean you can you can get it to their 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 thinking and say, all, right, all these two-year-old boys are being killed, and we could be could be the reason why because we told that that mm-hmm. guy back there about this, yeah. but it wasn't their fault, correct? Um, but still, in their thinking, they could have said, "Should we have stopped and asked for directions? Right. Um, d- did did we need to say what we said?" But you know, God works for good to those who love the Roman day 28. Right. And God brings about good things out of bad situations. You said that in your sermon. I did. You know, and God can't take away the bad and just have the good, you know. It, it, it's a package deal. Right. Uh, but God promises he'll work good in, in things like this. And it's a tough day to preach on, the, this thought of the innocence. And it's kind of, I don't want to say ironic, it's kind of weird that this king got so upset about his power and his reign because of a baby, to your right. And he didn't know where Jesus exactly was. So he has this brainstorm of an idea, and I say it sarcastically, a brainstorm of an idea. Well, let's just kill all the two-year-old boys. Right. Because we'll get Jesus. We'll, we'll get him somehow. We'll get him some shotgun approach. But what happens is he, he kills all these two-year-old boys and under, Except for one. Yeah, he misses him. He misses Jesus. No coincidence. Yeah. And 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 the thing <laughs> is, the thing is, you, you gotta look at Jesus saying, Wow, all these baby boys that just died because of me. Because of me. But then Jesus turns around at the end and he dies for right. all those those boys. See, and it's gonna go. Now I wanna take a little different angle on this, if you don't mind. So yeah. What I'm thinking about is fear, right? Yeah. What it really came down to was Herod was scared sure. that his power was going to be taken away from him. Therefore, he made a decision based upon that fear. Mm-hmm. So how yeah. often do we take the fear that we have and yeah. we make decisions that are maybe unethical or wrong or maybe just quick without yeah. you know gathering wisdom or going to the Bible? I know that that's something for me. I mean, we try to preach in my family like, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, right? Because God has a plan. But fear takes a huge toll in how we live our lives, and it can be kind of scary sometimes. So. And it's great because uh, Billy threw a verse on the screen. Um, every Sunday afternoon, I, I go on and I watch both services online. I watch, I worship online, um, both services. 
to, to watch this, the sermon and to see how I could help myself and change and, and grow and, and whatnot. And Billy had a fantastic slide on the screen during the sermon that I didn't even touch upon. I mentioned Pharaoh, and I kind of briefly mentioned Pharaoh that he killed baby boys too. Uh, but Billy put an awesome slide on the screen about fear, that Pharaoh threw all these boys in the Nile. And he did so because of fear. And Pharaoh feared for his reign. King Herod feared for his reign. And look what at the action they did because of fear. It, it, it was it was absurd. And thank you for throwing that slide on the screen because it was an awesome slide. And it shows us what fear does. We let it control it, our lives. It, it does. And 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 Rody is 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 here. I don't know if you can see Rody, but Rody. but he's bumping me over here. He wants me back in the screen. Rody's down here, so God bless Rody. So yeah, I love Rody. It's, yeah. good, it's a good answer. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah, it's a tough day to preach on. It really is. It really is. Um, yes. But what was was neat about it? I know you're big with this too, Phil. Um, in a couple of weeks, um, we have the Sanctity of Life Sunday, mm -hmm. where we talk about um, the slaughter of the innocents, mm -hmm. but what we can do as a Christian society, a Christian community, and get the word out there. And uh, you'll hear more about this in the coming weeks. But our own Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and our own president, Matthew yeah. Harrison, actually marches in that parade yeah, in Washington. And he leads that parade. Yeah, yeah it, it's very powerful. And one of these days, I, I want to get down there and, and be a part of that. So yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll hear more about that in, in uh, the coming weeks. That's great. It's kind of interesting how so many years ago, right, things really haven't changed yeah. all that much. Solomon, Solomon always had it right. Yeah. And the more things change, the more they stay the same. And what's the Virginia Slim? The, we've come a long way, baby. And we haven't. Yeah. It, we haven't at all. Yeah. What else you got, Billy? Last question. Oh, oh. You I'm touched ready. on why you're going to Buffalo. Yes. Hawaii. Or if I say it correctly, Hawaii. Hawaii. There we go. Hawaii. Hawaii. What you got going on there? You have any big event that... He's, a, he's in a big surf contest. You right? might be a, a part of. We're doing. Um, yeah. Uh, first off, uh, it is Epiphany. We just got out of uh, Christmas and uh, we just had the New Year. So if I can wish you a very Melikaliki Maki Maki Hiki Ho. And I'll teach you that. It's yeah. Melikaliki Maki Maki Hiki Ho, uh, which means Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in Hawaii. Right. So uh, Melikaliki Maki Maki Hiki Ho to everyone else. There you go. Um, I go. Uh, to Hawaii, and I volunteered for the PGA. Mm -hmm. And so, if you ever watch the golf tournaments on TV, you see this guy keeping the score for the golfers, mm -hmm. walking right next to them. And uh, that would be me. I'm one of those guys, one of those people. And I love it because we are only the few people allowed on the course with the golfers. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome to be with these golfers to talk to them. Some of them talk nonstop, and it's fun to talk and to work with people like Matt Kuchin who I've worked with for a couple of years. Matt Kuchik, a name might be familiar to you. You might not know this, but he's a big, big Christian. His faith is strong. Matt Kuchik leads Bible studies and prayer meetings on tour. Fantastic. Stuart cool. Sink, cool. man of faith. Stuart Sink marks his golf ball with a cross. Yeah, you showed me one of those. Yeah, yeah. Him. And so we talk about this, and you get to know the golfers. They might not remember your name because there's so many tournaments, no, yeah. but they remember you. And um, so, you're, you're the pastor guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we get talking. Some golfers, it's straight business, and that's fine. Some golfers talk nonstop. So it's really great to, to work with these golfers um, every day. I'll be doing it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Sunday, I'll be in worship, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I work the Pro-Am, and you get to work with some, some movie stars, which right. is fantastic, too. Um, one year I got to work with the, the swimsuit model that was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. That was, oh, that was kind of cool, yeah. Um, but then, and the guy from Break It Bad, I, I worked with him and, and whatnot. But then uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the tournament, and so I'll be there. And then one of the days, uh, I'm going to take one of our members out to dinner. Yes. Uh, I'm not yes. sure if you, I can say your name or not, but... Uh, um, well, I, I think I think everyone would know the youth member that's in Hawaii. Okay, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I can give her name on the air, but uh, the, the young lady from our youth group who is going to school in Hawaii. So there you go. Um, I've been taking her out for dinner, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, because she has told me that being a college kid, she doesn't get out much. No, no, and no, no. also, she has not yet had malasadas. And you have to have malasadas if you are going to Hawaii. 
You go ahead. What's a mana? Mana Mahasaha. Mana Mana what? Malasada. 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 M A L A S A D A. Malasada. Malasada is actually there. It is on your screen. There's it. Yeah. Malasada. Okay. A malasada. Oh, there it is. A malasada is a Portuguese donut. And uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Time out. In you Hawaii. gotta go to Hawaii to get a Portuguese donut. Yeah. No, yeah, that makes sense. That makes yes. sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, or you can have cocoa puffs. Uh, cocoa puffs. Cocoa puffs. It's, it, it, it's not a cereal. It's it, it, it's a dessert. And uh, cocoa puffs are sold at the Deli Hot Bakery. And so uh, it's gonna be neat. And uh, so it, it's gonna all this great food. Uh, yeah. Sushi, uh, Lao Lao. Mm. Uh, if you get her to eat sushi, yeah, you are truly. Tell you what, you can bring me some. You can bring me back it, first. Oh, sushi, Lao Lao, uh, Lao Lao is great too. Uh, poi, uh, poi is always good. Um, Kalua beef, uh, lomi lomi. Oh, oh, the food is out of this world, and I just can't wait to dive back into food and, and the culture again, and um, it, it just the music and, and mm -hmm. just the aloha, and so. Uh, to all, my, nice. to all my Ohana out there in the islands, so you serve back. <laughs> like it. And Very Ohana nice. Family. Ohana meets family. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Ohana meets family. Yeah. Good Very questions, nice. Billy. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else today? No, that's it. We're done. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. We're done. God bless your week. Bam. Thanks again for joining us. If you have any questions about Redeemer, have a topic or interview suggestion, or need to know anything about the church, you can contact the church office at churchoffice at redeemerwarsaw.org, phil at phil.prevail at gmail.com, or billy at rlc underscore it at redeemerwarsaw.org. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And please join us again next week. And until then, may the Lord be with your spirit and grace be with you.